Uh, she's in the hospital having some type of heart trouble. So uh, let's uh, remember remember her. God's able to touch and move. Oh, oh. And, uh, let's remember that. Let's remember all the other shut-ins and the other things that that is uh, touching our country. Let's remember Marie and her family. They they uh, lost her brother this week, and there's been a, a other deaths and all that. And it, it's bad any time when you lose a loved one, but when one is in in the hospital or in the nursing home and they won't let you out to go to the funeral that is bad so let's remember all of them and all the situations but let's go to the lord in prayer this morning opening up our service and then uh, brother kenny will be coming around to, to lead a few songs so uh, we just want to say, and if any of the other song leaders want to come up and help, you're welcome to. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, God, we come before you today. Lord, lifting you up in the time of needs and trouble, God, we lifting you up, praising you, Lord, for all the healing you can do and all the delivering you can do. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll move, God, in our service today, Lord. We pray, God, that you'll just take control of it all. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Rookie. Okay. Anybody wants to come help him? Come on up. Watch it, 
worship the Lord. And you know this is a time where where it makes a fellowship just seem gooder and gooder. Uh, now we just need to get in here this morning and worship the Lord and lift our holy hand or lift our hands to a holy God. Uh, may I say it that way? Lift our hands to a holy God uh, and worship and serve Him this morning. Uh, hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do. Uh, you might have wanted to see how many people was here uh, uh, who came. But I'm telling you one thing about it. It is good. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can tell you I feel the Holy Ghost moving. I'm like Brother Kenny now. It feels like it's saturating from my feet to my head. Hallelujah. This is rich, brother. This is rich, sister. This is awesome. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. We're going to take time for two or three specials this morning. But I'm wanting you to know that you have a right to worship and serve the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Johnny, come around and sing one. Steve-O, you can uh, come up next. We sure like to sing out. What's that song? Oh, yeah. When he's on the cross. Uh, Brother Kenny, being requested, you come back around and sing when he was on the cross. Hallelujah. All right, look like Brother Kenny while he's still feeling the spirit. He's just going to come on up now. Hallelujah. One thing about it, uh, uh, Brother Ben, is you can uh, tell them or, or show them around. Uh, there's a plenty of room. If you want to run and shout, you've got plenty of room to run and shout around here. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Kenny. Oh, it is. It's meant for me to sing the song, and not not just to hear me, because I already done felt before I was asked. I was supposed to sing it last Sunday, and I didn't. I said, "Well, if I feel like it and impressed, I do it today." And I felt it when I was walking back across. I don't know who else needs the song, but he knew you when he hung on that cross. He had you in mind that you would need a Savior. And you could call out to him. That's why he paid the penalty of sin debt with his precious blood that we can come boldly to the throne room of our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. I'm not on an eagle trip. I'm nothing on my own. I make mistakes and often slip just common flesh and bone but I prove someday just what I say I am a special kind cause when he was on the cross I was on his mind on his face the thorns were on his head the blood was on the scarlet road stained the crimson red oh his eyes were on the crown that day Yeah. 
Oh, a weeping may be endured in the night, but joy, joy cometh in the morning. We're not always going to be going through the things we're going through because joy will be in the morning. What happens in the morning? The sun will rise. Hallelujah. We won't be stuck in the grave. But we won't be stuck on the earth. But joy. Amen. Amen. Comes with the rising of the sun. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but I think it's time that we, if we just praise the Lord. You know, I see all these hands reaching out of the car windows and praising God. I'm telling you. I said I ain't got no uh, uh, one of those doohickeys. 
I'm the, I just like to go with the flow and, and if somebody else wants to get up here and help me preach, I'll preach. They can have it. I, but I'm saying that we are making a formality out of serving God and you can't do it on a format. You got to do with the leadership of the Holy Ghost. I, a lot of people are being led by this and that, but it's time that we be led by God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, one song was, won't it be worth it? Hallelujah. When we struggling down here, and when we get to the other side, won't it be worth it over the... Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Well, Brother Milford, he was on the cross over 2,000 years ago. That's all right. He still had me on his mind. Thank God. He, he was still thinking of me. And the other song, God has a mountaintop. Yeah. Woo, glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to be preaching this morning. If time allows, uh, and, and the title of it is The Valley of Baca. Of Baca. Uh, the Valley of Baca. And, 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 and I, I'm going to tear my message up for right quick. And don't mean to, but that's just the, the Valley of Baca was called the Weeping Valley. You and I are in a weeping valley today. You and I, if we travel down this road, we are in a weeping valley. But God yes, sir. a mountain top and the sun will be shining. The sun will be raining. Hallelujah. And we, it will be worth it all. My child. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to be reading a little bit this morning in the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. But when I, before I get to that, I've had a battle this week. A bad battle. Something happened back in my young Christian days I was a Sunday school teacher and one of my students after they a few years they got out of church and and something happened and and uh, he uh, he done something horrible and uh, he's got to spend the rest of his life in penitentiary I was so broke up and and the devil you know he loves to push us down yeah. I had to go talk to brother Luke because I told brother Luke I, I lost one brother I lost one Brother Luke said, he's still alive and he can still get saved. You may not have lost him. He may just got himself in a place that he's got to be, got to have God. So, Friday of this week, something's happened again. Something happened this week. And the devil come at me full force. He said, aha, you done done it again. You done done it again. You done let another one slip. But the boy was sent here for several services to get help. Now he's in a place he's going to have to have God's help. I told the devil, I said, you can pick on me. You can do what you want to. You can say what you want to. 
But I say, I'm not going to win them all. But he ain't lost permanently yet. He's not lost permanently yet. But you know, we are we are still praying hard for him. Yes, we are. But I'm going to tell you something. He's done something that's going to really change everything around him. But I feel like he's in a place now where he has to get his attention on God to survive. But I believe all of you here at Fredonia, I believe that he was sent here for the awaking up. I believe that Corona is here to wake up our whole world yes, of America yes, and to wake up the sleeping idol church. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. The church needs to be alive. The church. I'm tired of the church having to be on respirators. I'm tired of the church having to pinned on Come on. our knees to Come make on. them alive. I'm telling you the time that we get service said I'm tired of people threatening me with hell why don't they threaten me with heaven <laughs> you know what I wish it was that simple they'd say okay you go to heaven you go to heaven you go to heaven you go to hell you go to heaven but it ain't like that there is and choosing that you got to choose. It ain't up to you to where you're going to go unless you make a choice. You can't say, I want to go to heaven and you're living like the devil. You, If you want to go to heaven, honey, you got to live like you want to go to heaven. Amen. If you, if you, hey, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to go to hell they thought they were going to heaven because you can't go to heaven in an easy chair. You can't go to heaven and be rotten to sleep. It's time that we wake up. Amen. When we wake up, we are serving a living God. Amen. And you can't make it on your own. You can't make it the way you want to do it. We got to have a separated life. We got to be different from everything else. Hallelujah. I want to say that I want to be different. I want to be a different. I want to make a difference in other people's lives. I'm going to tell you that you can. Seeing all these cars out here and people out here this morning. It shows me that some people got a desire to serve God and live for God. But I'm telling us that we got to wake up 
We've got to wake up and let people know there's something down inside of me that's keeping me alive. There's something down here that's keeping me alive. Uh, hallelujah. Y'all pray for me and he's doing all kinds of things trying to keep me alive. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's more important that I preach the word of God and live the word. There's a lot of preachers out here just preaching. Preaching away. I heard just the other day a preacher. He was reading. He said the word of God. Sound like to me it was a reader's digest. I didn't know half the words he was talking about. I said, that ain't in my Bible. Hallelujah. A lot of people are preaching what they want to preach. But hey, if you're not preaching what thus saith the Lord, you ain't accomplishing anything. But I'm saying if we got to have all our our ex-pastor brother Milton Luke used to say that you gotta eat this word. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You gotta let this word go down. Woo! Over there in the book of Revelation. Oh, The angel told told uh, John. He said, "Eat, eat, yeah, yeah, Woo! yeah, eat." eat. This hey, yeah. this word is better than Texas Roadhouse. Yeah. This word is better than a watermelon. Right. Hallelujah! Yeah. This word. And I'm naming my favorite stuff, okay? <laughs> then then uh, strawberry, vanilla, and, and chocolate all mixed together in one of those big old sugar cones. I'm telling you, this is better than all of that. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, but I'm going to say, I thank God uh, that we need to slow down. Yeah. And, you know, I could... I could tell you how much I've read in the in the Bible in these past few weeks, but it be sound like I'm bragging. So I ain't gonna tell you, but I'm gonna tell you I've read a lot more than I have in the past. Hallelujah! And I'm gonna tell you something. I believe if you ain't reading your Bible daily, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Daily. Daily. Go ahead, Say there is something wrong with you. Yeah. Amen. You got to read the word. Yeah. Well, Brother Milford, my vocabulary, and I can't read as good. Thank God for all of this new fangled dangle stuff. Now, you know, I got on my on my little little phone thing. I could pull up the word of God. And it will read to me. Yeah. I mean, it just that reads to me. And I, it ain't one of those junk versions either. It's a King James version. I, I'm telling you, I, I'm saying it's time that America come back oh, to yeah. the true God. Oh, yeah. Come back undefiled. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the name oh, yeah. of the living oh, yeah. God. Yeah. See, y'all don't get nervous today because I got my watch on. Okay. Hallelujah. And we just switched that we just switched to Alabama time. If you got a cell phone, you, you can change over from Georgia to Alabama. But we go I'm telling you, I ain't on no time limit. I'm telling you, we are living Come on in the now. valley of Baker. Yeah, go ahead. Hallelujah. Oh man, let, let me tell you what I did. Yeah. You know, I, I got this message last Wednesday. Oh man, I mean, I spent a, a good little while writing down, studying. So this morning I said, man, Lord, I thank you for giving me a message that I've never heard no part of. So, you know, also on my little cell phone thing, I got one of them little things that got a G in it. I guess it means Google. So I clicked on it. And I put wrote in there, Valley of B. 
baker. Hey, I didn't come up with this at all. This thing's been out for years. I found out there was a bunch of sermons on baker. And I said, well, I'm just going to leave it ori original like God gave me. So I just read a little bit and got a little bit of meaning of it. But I'm going to tell you, we may endure weeping for a night, but the joy, the joy coming in the morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Psalms 84. How amiable. All thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. Woo, God. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for yes, freedom. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. We could have had church over in the uh, uh, parking lot of the church. We could have had it over there. Uh, there's a place we could have set up and, and, and had the cars. But, you know, a lot of people want to just make sure everybody knows they have in church. But I'm telling you, the only one that matters to me to let them know I'm having church uh, is the Almighty God. Uh, that we want to worship Him. Uh, so we're over here across the road in the woods. Hey. Hallelujah. Yeah. With what God has yeah. blessed us with. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, and I thank Him for all His blessings. Hallelujah. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yeah. Seeing this crowd here this morning. Seeing this crowd this morning out here shows me that you miss the fellowship Amen. and miss the coming together to worshiping God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. There's a family. You know, but seeing everybody coming together, I think Mitch told me there was around 49 people here. And it could, and now I am a, a, a what do you call it? A, I believe in evangelism exaggeration. I'm going to say there's 50 here. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, but at least 49 souls. You say, well, Brother Milford, you're more hung up on numbers. Uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Bean, you ain't going to be able to get me on this. Uh, Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, give me your arm, brother. I know I ain't supposed to touch you. But anyway, look. This is a number. But it's also a soul. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, there were some changes made back in August of this past year. There were some changes made. And I'm telling you, thank God for the number. Amen. Without a number, you can't be a soul. Hallelujah. So I thank God for the numbers. Hallelujah. Well, Brother Milford, are you satisfied with the number? Satisfied? Is God satisfied? There we go. Am I still, still searching. preaching? Still searching. Hey. And I'll be honest with you. And I've told people this. As long as you're saved, sanctified, and get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you're led of the Lord, I don't care why you go to church. Amen. But, oh glory, as long as I can do a little part, that's what I want to do. Hallelujah. Serving an almighty God. Everybody that's got saved at Fredonia, all of them don't attend Fredonia. Yep. There's preachers stretched out all over this nation that got saved over at the Fredonia Church. Not just during my ministry. I got saved in 1976. 
under Brother Milton Luke's ministry. He got letters saying all kinds of things about me, and it wasn't good, neither. <laughs> Had a lady come up to Sister Luke and shown it. She said, she said, what did y'all do to him? <laughs> Sister Luke said, you know, she caught her off guard. She said, what do you mean? She said, he used to be the meanest, the vulgarest talking man I knew. She said, but then all of a sudden, then Sister Luke said, oh, he got saved. Amen. <laughs> oh, glory. Hallelujah. I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't go to places I used to go. I don't. Oh, I just don't do the things I used to do. Oh, hey. Hallelujah. I got to get on. Hallelujah. We got to go on. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Oh, my heart, my flesh cries out for the living God. When you seen these people when they drove up this morning, you could tell their heart was crying out for the fellowship of other church people, but most of all, the fellowship of God. And I believe altars has been being rebuilt in homes where they have right. moved it out. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Let me go on verse 3. Yea, the sparrow hath found in house and sw a swallow for herself where she may lay her young, even thine altars. Yeah. Oh, glory. You know, you can go to some churches now, there ain't no altar in the church. Yeah, I know if you want an altar, you can find one. I've used the benches a lot of times. I've, I've used benches in the church for altars when there wouldn't be. But I'm going to tell you, when Brother Milford decides to remove the altars from the house of God, it's time for you to get rid of Brother Milford. Because we need to be building altars, yeah. not destroying altars. We need to be uplifting altars, not displacing them. I, I heard that it was a church just in Roanoke, Alabama. They had a big split because uh, or they was about to have a big split because they was wanting to, to take out the altars. Well, they come to a compromise. I mean, this person was telling me this. I mean, I was listening. And I could, I mean, you, I remember it very well. But anyway, she said, and her husband was standing there. She said, yeah, we just come to a, 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 a place where we could make an agreement. So she said, we put wheels on the altar. We put wheels on the altar. And I said, I, I thought of it. I didn't tell her. I said, man, woman, if I jumped on y'all's altar, then I'd fall off because that thing would take off and leave me stranded. But I'm going to tell you, I feel like that. It says an altar will make you stable. Yeah. And I want to be on a stable altar. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that's a good one. The rock. Yeah. Most altars back, way back yonder, was built out of rock. Yeah. Oh, oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah. And that's as stable as you want to be. Hallelujah. Oh, my, my. Hallelujah. Wrong, wrong pulpit. Hallelujah. We got pulpits all around here. And, and if you're wondering why I got this one, that one doesn't got too low. I can't see the words on that one. Yeah, my bifocals ain't bifocaling enough. Hallelujah. So I had to get something taller. Hallelujah. 
Blessed. Verse 4. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. In the hardest of times, the troublous time, we that have been founded on the rock will still be praising and worshiping the almighty God. Yeah. Blessed. Oh man, I could go on. I got all kind of things over here. Oh man. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee in whose heart are the ways of them. Verse 6. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. Now, I finally got there. Yeah. Now we're going to clock. We're going to preach. That's preach. Hallelujah. Now we got to preach. Hallelujah. Yeah, prim preliminaries are over. Hallelujah. The Valley of Baker. The Valley of Baker is a valley in Palestine. A Palestine. One writer was writing that I read this morning that the children of Israel, when they was coming out and crossing into the promised land, they had to go through the valley of Baca. Yep. Now this valley is where a tree grows there that they call the weeping tree. There's a gum that flows out of this tree. And they call the tree a weeping tree. You and I, as we travel down this road, we go through valleys of weeping. We go through valleys of weeping. Every now and then we'll get to get on the mountaintop where everything is lovely. Everything, oh my, everything is beautiful. But always in the valley. Go ahead. One of the prettiest flowers ever known. Yeah. It grows in the deepest valley. Right in the middle of the valley. Yeah. Is always some kind of water flowing. Right. Yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah. The Spirit of God don't leave you in the valley. Oh, I know it don't. He'll be there with you. He'll be right in the midst with you. Yeah. Right in the middle of this deep valley. The children of Israel, they named it Baker. I guess somebody named it. And it was the weeping valley. You and I, we go through valleys of weeping. We go through valleys that looks like trying times. I go through them. You go through them. Ain't nobody exempt. Right, right. Had one lady to ask me one time, Brother Milford, do you ever go any go through anything? I said, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She said, You always look like everything's going fine. You know, everything don't always go fine for nobody. I have problems. You have problems. But I know I got a church family that loves me and I can go to any of them. Whew. And they'll lift me up by some word. Now, let me tell you, all church people don't lift you up with good words. I got a, uh, I got a sister over here Ben, get a good shot. 
Oh, he's going dead. Well, so they're going to get him some power anyway. We're but good. We're, good. we're good now. The doctor come in the uh, room and he told my wife, and he done told me, and he come in and told my wife that I may not live through the night. That, that I might, I may not make it through the night. And uh, I kind of smiled and, hey, I knew where I was going. I was going to be a winner either way. If I go or if I stay, I was going to be a winner either way. But now, Sister Angie, I, I ain't calling her name, but Sister Angie, she walked in my room and my wife was sitting there, teared up. My old Betty was there. Angie walked in. And, you know, being an uplifting sister she is, she looked down at me on the bed. She said, you know, you look just like my grandpa did the night he died. <laughs> I said, thank you, Angie. I said, he told me I may not live through the night. Now, Angie turned a to a ghost white. <laughs> she turned pure, and I thought she was going to faint. And then she started apologizing. You know, a lot of times, but whether, she, and she knew, she knows my life. She's seen the before effects and the after effects of the power of God. But she knew that I was a changed man. And she knew that my life had changed. But, you know, I thought it was kind of funny at the time. And, and well, one reason, you got to know Angie. You got to know Angie. Yep. She, she, anyway, she keeps things cooking sometimes. But anyway... The weeping tree, or the weeping valley, the, the name Becca means bewail, W-A-I-L, complain, make lamentations, mourn, soar with tears and weep. It's what it means. And buddy, when I read that and got to studying, I said, we are in the middle of the Valley of Becca. So I'm saying, folks, we live in a time that we need to be crying out to God. Amen. The Lord is soon. Brother Kenny had... He was, he was doing a fine job in leading singing and then singing that song. And he's right on time. The coming of the Lord could be today. It could come. He could come this evening. He could come tonight. But one thing I know for sure is that he is coming. His word is telling us that he's coming. Going on now, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appear before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. Behold, O oh God, our shield. He's my shield. He's my shield. And look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day is in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Hallelujah. For the Lord God 
is a son and and that's a S U N and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them to them that walk up rightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Amen. If you don't trust in God, whatever you're trusting in is vanity. Right. It's vanity. But we got to trust in the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, God sent His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for somebody like me. Come on. And I'll be honest with you, I can't even walk without holding His hand. Hallelujah. Without His hand, I'll fall. And I will fail. Now, I'm coming to a close. We got these wood benches all around the front here. If you want to come and kneel, there's plenty of room. You got plenty of room. If a whole family comes together, you get on one bench. And all the benches are six foot apart. Hallelujah. But if you want to come, these altars are open. And I want to close with these two scriptures. Just read them. But I want to read them again to where It'll sink in. It'll sink in. It'll sink in. Verse 11. Psalms 84. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing Will he withhold from them that walk uprightly? O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. surely be me I thought I could be what I wanted to be I thought of myself as a mighty great friend but I can't even walk without you holding 
Appreciate everybody here, everybody that's tuned in. Hope that you'll find the Lord if you don't know Him. Because